<clears throat> okay, so I hope my voice is clear to everyone. Uh, we are starting uh, the topic called irrecoverable debts or bad debts in this video. So, first of all, I will cover the topic in this video, and then in the next video, uh, we will solve some practice question to gain the better understanding of the concept. All right, so let's start our topic bad debt <clears throat> okay so first of all uh i will come to that uh, what is bad debts like um how do we record the bad debts and what is even bad debts i will come to that later in the video but first of all um let's start with the very basic concept that there are two types of sales all right you all know then there are two types of sales uh, one is cash sales and another is credit sales right you covered this everything um, in the previous chapters uh, especially in the double entry chapter you all know what is the, what is the entry for cash sales and what is the entry for credit sales you all know it very well right so just to revise it quickly whenever we make cash sales so what is our double entry we debit cash and we credit sales right and for credit sales what is our double entry credit sales and debit receivable right so i hope this is very clear to everyone if this is if, if there is some confusion in the double entries it is very important to have the grip on the topic called double entry because if you are not having the grip on this topic you are going to face a lot of difficulties in this uh, bad debts topic as well as further in f3 <clears throat> further in financial accounting so okay so anyways uh, there are two types of sales uh, number one it is a cash sale debit cash and credit sales it's a double entry and number two there is a credit sale debit and saleable and credit sales as you all know right and when you make a credit sale um, obviously you will receive the cash from a credit customer in future so whenever you when the cash is received in the future uh, what double entry do you pass uh, you make the double entry debit cash obviously because you are receiving the cash for debit cash and you need to finish off the receivables now so credit receivables all right so these are the entries few entries uh, basic entries which you all need to know <clears throat> all right okay we will come to this uh, later on age receivable analysis uh, what is the age receivable analysis we will, we will come to this later on first of all uh, let's see for that bad debts all right bad debts okay so bad debts are our expenses bad debts is our expenses and you all know that our expenses are charged um, in a statement of profit and loss right they are deducted from the gross profit all the expenses are deducted from the gross profit uh, to get the net profit right so bad debts are our expenses uh, they are charged in the statement of profit and loss charged in the statement of profit and loss right okay so now what is that bad debt so what is bad debt for example uh we a bad debt happens with a credit customer like for example you have a business and you sold goods to mr ali for example you sold goods to mr ali on credit for one thousand dollar right you sold goods to mr ali on credit for one thousand dollar <throat> what happens is that for example for example um mr ali mr ali um is not able to pay you 
right uh, for example if mr ali is not able to pay you due to any reason due to any reason maybe unfortunately mr ali died or uh, maybe he become bankrupt and he don't have enough money to pay off his liabilities right or he got disappeared somewhere um or for example he was involved uh in the fraud with us right uh, and he ran like he did not pay us or due to any reason uh, mr ali did not pay us so what we do is we need to, uh, this is this will be the expense for us what we need to do is we need to charge this expense um called bad debt as a uh, as expense in statement of profit and loss we need to charge charge this uh, bad debt as expense in statement of profit and loss because we won't receive the uh money from him in the future right um if we are if we are certain if we are confirmed that he will not pay us so we need to pass the double entry for bad debt and we charge the bad debts as expense and statement of profit and loss all right <clears throat> so i hope uh, that is clear what is bad debts right so bad debts always happen when uh, you are selling the goods to a customer on credit right uh, if you are selling on the cash then obviously there are no bad debts because on there the customers are paying you the cash at same time when they are receiving the goods so there is no bad debts bad debt is something like um, the customer not able to pay in the later date as he promised like uh, he bought the goods on credit from us and he is not able to pay us due to any reason uh, so we need to charge bad debts as expense in profit and loss statement of profit and loss of the business so there are some situations when it, it is when it is confirmed that customer cannot pay us right so you will not you will not pass the uh, double entry or you will not charge the bad debts as an expense in profit and loss until and unless it is confirmed that customer cannot pay us right so what are the situation what are the some situations that customer cannot pay us we are confirmed that customer cannot pay us what are the some situations for example the customer died so how will he be able to pay us in that situation we will pass the double entry for bad debt and charge the bad debt expense in statement of profit and loss <clears throat> second reason can be that we cease the business right um, our business is no more so how will the credit customer pay us then our business is no more right so in that case it is a bad debt uh, sorry 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 not our business actually <clears throat> Just, just remove this point for now. Okay. So, for example, uh, number one reason when the situation is confirmed, the customer cannot pay us. Uh, it is the debt of customer. Secondly, uh, if a customer is bankrupt, what does bankrupt mean? That he don't have enough money to pay the liabilities, right? Um, he cannot pay off the liabilities. So, customer is bankrupt. We are confirmed that he cannot pay us. Thirdly, um, he may be disappeared. He did not pay us and he disappeared. So we are uh, certain and we are confirmed that he may not pay us in the future. So we will pass the bad debt entry and charge in statement of profit and loss as expense. One more reason can be that he did the fraud with us uh, and he won't pay us in future. If we are confirmed about that, we will pass the double entry for bad debt and charge in statement of profit and loss as expense all right so these were some situations that when the customer cannot pay us all right these these are only the some situations there may be other reasons too but just to explain you um like at what time at, at what situation we should pass the double entry for bandits and charge in statement of profit and loss so these were the some examples all right so whenever uh, as discussed that whenever uh, we are confirmed we are certain that bad debts uh, we need to charge the bad debts 
So we pass the double entry debit, bad debts, and credit receivables. Why do we debit the bad debts? The reason is very simple. As you all know, the nature of the expenses uh, are debit. Like ex um, you studied in the very first topic, double entry, that what is the nature of expenses? Expenses are always debited, right? So bad debt is our expense. So we debit bad debts and we will credit the receivables. The reason to credit the receivables is that, uh, for example, for example, uh, when you sold goods to Mr. Ali, for example, um, we'll copy this example. For example, you sold goods to Mr. Ali on credit for one thousand dollar, right? So, what double entry you made at the time you sold? goods to Mr. Ali. Um, obviously you made the double entry receivable 1000 debit and credit sales 1000. Right? Obviously this is the double entry for credit sales. You all know. Right? So when the bad debt is confirmed, all right, when the bad debt is confirmed, so we need to uh, debit the bad debts. A reason because bad debts is our expense. So we do, uh, and expenses are always debit. And why do we credit receivables? Because when you made the sales on credit, you debited the receivables. And now when the bad debts are confirmed that he will not pay us in the future, our receivable will not pay us in the future. So obviously we need to finish off our receivable. So now we uh, credit the receivables by 1000. All right. We need to credit the receivables to finish it off. So this is the double entry for bad debts when it, when it is confirmed that bad debts will happen. So this is the double entry we need to pass. Hmm. Okay. Secondly, um, if for example, after um, after some months, after some months or after some years, uh, the bad debts were recovered. What is the bad debt? <clears throat> Sorry, what does it mean that bad debts were recovered? Mm, it simply means that, for example, in June, uh, you made the double entry for bad debts. You charge the bad debts in statement of profit and loss as an expense. But in September, for example, the bad debts were recovered. Uh, the customer, for example, Mr. Ali, who got disappeared uh, in June, but he came back in September and paid us the amount. Uh, he paid us the amount that he owes. So what will happen in that case uh, we need to finish off the bad debts now like we charged um, the bad debts as expense and same of profit and loss right uh, we debited the bad debts so now we need to finish off the bad debts right because we need to finish off the bad debts right because uh, there are there are no more our bad debts because it is recovered the customer came to pay us so now bad debts will be finished off so credit bad debts and obviously he's paying us he came to pay us so he's paying us the cash so debit cash because cash is coming now all right so if the bad debts are recovered what will be the double entry we will finish off the bad debts we previously written off, written off as an expense and separate of profit and loss we need to finish it off so we need to credit them and we need to debit the cash because we are receiving the cash from from the mr uh, whosoever is the customer all right so when bad debts are recovered this is the double entry Okay. Now, no, for example, uh, for example, bad debts are not conformed. For example, we are not so sure that Mr. Ali will pay us, or maybe he will not pay us. We are not sure. Uh, maybe we are sixty percent chances that Mr. Ali will be not pay us, forty percent chances that he will pay us, or whatsoever, whatsoever are the chances. But if we are doubtful. If we are doubtful that our customer will pay us or not pay us, what we do is um, we cannot charge uh, bad debts as an expense in statement of property and loss when you when we are not conform, right? When we are doubtful, when we are doubtful. So if we are doubtful um, and we need to um, 
make to make something called an allowance for receivable. Like an allowance for receivable is something like if you are doubtful, you can charge bad debt. Um, you can charge bad debt as an expense, but um, it will be an, it will be an allowance for receivable. All right, like you are in doubt, the customer will pay or not. So you can charge bad debts, debit bad debt and credit allowance for receivable. You can make the allowance for receivable and allowance for receivable is always credit. And what is allowance for receivable? <laughs> allowance for receivable um, is that that your receivable might not pay in the future. All right, so you are, so you are, so you are making the allowance for him. I will tell you the exact definition for allowance for receivable. Give me a minute. Allowance for receivable. Okay, <clears throat> so the actual definition of allowance for receivable is that it is the estimate of the management. It is the estimate of the management about the. It is the estimate of the management about the receivables. that will not be paid by the customers all right so allowance for receivable is basically the estimate of the management about the receivable that will not be paid by the customers right um like for uh, like in simple words that management is making the estimate that how many uh, customers want to pay us maybe they want to pay us we are not confirmed if we are confirmed that then we will charge uh bad debt as an expense in property and house but if we are doubtful then we need to make an allowance for up to that amount for example we need to make um, we sold goods to Mr. Ali for 1000 right? So we will we'll make the allowance for 1000 Like maybe he does not pay us. Maybe. So debit will be bad debt and credit will be allowance for a Um If it is a doubtful debt, if it is expected that he might not pay. <laughs> All right. I hope you got this one. Okay, so now next entry. Okay, so now what if uh, if you pass the level entry for doubtful debts, uh, debit, bad debt, and credit allowance for receivable, but later at the later date you got to know that uh, bad debt actually happened. So what will we what will we do now? <laughs> you already passed this entry, right, in the accounting records, but you got to know that bad debt actually happened. The, the, the customer, customer did not pay us. Mr. Ali did not pay us. Actually, did not pay us. Um, first, it was only our expectation that he will, he will not pay us. But no, he actually he did not pay us. So, what we what we if we make the double entry now? We need to finish off the allowance for the sale. We charged previously, right? We charged allowance for the sale credit previously but, but now we need to finish off the allowance for receivable because the bad debt had actually happened so we need to debit the allowance for receivable and we need to credit the receivable we need to finish off the receivables right if bad debt actually happened so debit the allowance for receivable and credit receivable this is when uh, you already made the entry for our doubtful debt and now you need to cancel that and you need to and you need to cancel that, so you need to debit the allowance for receivable and credit the receivable, and you will make this entry. When bad debts are confirmed, uh, bad debt actually happened, so you will make this entry now. Debit bad debts and credit receivables, right?
So I hope this is clear now. Um, and let's move further and have a look at some of the formulas um, used to solve the questions. All right. If you remember these formulas, uh, it will really uh, become easier for you to solve the questions. The life will become very much easier. <clears throat> so let's have a look at some formulas. Um, First of all, um, if the question states, there are two types of questions basically. If the question states that um, what should we charge, charge in statement of profit and loss, right? Now the short form of profit and loss is SPL, statement of profit and loss. So if the question states that what do we need to charge in the statement of profit and loss, so what will be the formula for that? Formula for that will be bad debts minus difference in allowance. All right, the bad, the amount of bad debts expect, and the, and the amount of bad debts given in the question, and you need to subtract difference in allowance from that. All right, uh, and now what is the difference in allowance? What is the formula for difference in allowance? The formula for uh, difference in allowance is opening allowance minus closing allowance. All right. The difference in, and the formula for difference in allowance is opening allowance minus closing allowance. You will get the difference in allowance uh, and you will subtract this from the bad debts and you will get the answer what to charge in the statement of profit and loss. All right. Um, and what is the allowance? We already discussed what is uh, allowance for SA, well, right? So opening allowance means it means that um, at the start of a year, the allowance we decided, the estimate that management made that uh, these many customers can be uh, can be doubtful to pay us, right? So at the start of the year, there's there is an opening allowance, and at the end of the year, there is a closing allowance, right? So there is the formula for difference in allowance. Okay. <laughs> Lastly, for if uh, closing allowance is not given in the question, if closing allowance is not given in the question, how do we calculate the closing allowance? We will subtract bad debts from receivables and multiply uh, with the percentage of closing allowance given in the question. All right. Like for, I I will repeat this. If the if the closing allowance is not given in the question. How do we calculate the closing allowance? Simple is that uh, is that you will use the formula the savables minus bad debt inside the bracket and multiply that uh, with the percentage of closing allowance that will be given in the question. All right. So this is the way you calculate the closing allowance whenever you are not given with the closing allowance in the question. All right. So this is what we you and this is these are the formulas that we use in the uh same your profit and loss. if we are asked that what to what do we charge in profit and loss so we will use these formulas and solve our questions um and trust me if you remember these formulas your life will really become easier and you will be able to solve each and every question um for bad debts <clears throat> all right and we will surely solve in the next video we will solve some questions from the uh, captain or baby packet so that you can gain the better understanding <clears throat> secondly uh, in the same way if the question states that what will be included in statement of financial position all right in the same way if the question states that what will be included in the statement of financial position what will we do then so first of all, we need to know that always and always debt receivable uh, will be included in statement of financial position. All right. Always we need to include net receivables in the statement of financial position. All right. So what is the formula to calculate the net receivables? The formula to calculate the net receivables is gross receivables minus actual bad debt minus closing allowance. All right. 
you will have the better understanding when we solve some questions in the next video uh, you will gain the better understanding of how to use this formula of the net variables i will explain you in detail uh, when we solve the questions in the next video so i do recommend that you watch uh, my next video so that uh, it is clear to you that what do this mean all right so okay <clears throat> so the next thing uh, that we need to know is the impact on profit and receivables if we decrease our allowance or we increase our allowance all right for example <clears throat> we saw here uh, we saw in this one we saw that doubtful debts when uh, were expected we saw that we debit bad debt and we credit the allowance for receivable we are making the allowance for receivable in this entry right so this means when we are crediting the allowance for receivable this means that we are increasing our um, we are increasing our allowance right so whenever we will increase our allowance it means that we are expecting that some customers may not pay in the future right that's what the increase in allowance means right that you are expecting that some of the customers will not pay us in the future so is this good or bad you tell me is this good or bad obviously this is bad if you if you are expecting that some of the customers will not pay us in the future obviously this is bad for the business so increase in allowance is always bad for the business and whenever we uh, in, are increasing the allowance obviously it will reduce the profits the profit of the business and our receivables will decrease right whenever we are making the allowance for receivable obviously it is expected that our net profit and receivable will decrease in the same way uh, if the allowance for receivable is decreasing like we saw <coughs> um if the allowance for receivable is decreasing um it's exactly opposite to that one that our net profit will increase and the receivable will increase all right so this is the short concept that we <coughs> <coughs> sorry this is the short concept that we need to know and lastly uh, there is something called as receivable analysis we need to uh, know that only the concept of age receivable analysis we do not need to go in the detail of age receivable analysis and it is only the theory uh, small theory not and you you don't you do not need to cal perform calculations for age receivable analysis um, only you need to know that uh, what is age receivable analysis so in short uh, what is age receivable analysis is um, it is at the keeping the track of credit customers like for example you you have a business you you have your own business there are many credit customers of the business right there are many credit customers so you need to keep the track of them like who is paying uh, within a given time and who is not paying within a given time so that's uh, we uh, that's all is called uh, keeping the track of credit customers for example there are two customers uh, there is a customer named mr rumor and there is a customer named mr saad <laughs> we made sales to mr umar for 5000 pounds and we made sales to mr saad for 4000 pounds all right uh, so and we allowed them uh, and we allowed mr umar 50 days and we allowed Mr. Saad 70 days to pay the amount they own, right? They owe, sorry. We allowed Mr. Omar 50 days to pay the amount. We allowed Mr. Saad 70 days to pay the amount. okay i'm sorry so we allowed uh, mr umar 50 days 
and Mr. Saha 70 days and the time that has been elapsed, the time that has been passed is 70 days. Uh, Mr. Umar did not pay us. 70 days are already passed, but Mr. Umar did not pay us, right? And for Mr. Saad, 50 days are already passed out of 70 days. So what will this? Uh, in the company, there will be a person called credit controller, right? There will be a person called credit controller. Um, he will track the record of these customers like he will keep the track of these credit customers he will say that mr umel was allowed 50 days for example and the time passed was 70 days so he will call mr umel he will try to contact mr umel and ask him the reasons that why he did not pay us up till now and when he is expected to pay us right so that is the responsibility of credit controller uh, that to keep the record of credit customers in the same way uh, the time allowed for mr saad was 70 days and the time passed was 50 days only so credit controller do not need to contact mr saad because he still have 20 days left so uh, if he still not pays within the 70 days so, uh, and the time allowed is passed so he will contact mr saad as well so, all right. So, in short, you just need to know um, that what is analysis analysis. It is simply keeping the track of credit customers. Mm -hmm. So, that's it. Um, that's the only um, things that we need to cover in this topic. Uh, and if you understand this really well, if you remember the formulas, if you remember the double entries, you will be easily able to solve the, any question from this topic and i will show you in the next lecture uh, we will solve some question for your better understanding of, and the remaining question you will solve yourself and if you have any doubt in any question you can contact me uh, on my whatsapp number and i will surely respond to your queries thank you so much hope this video was helpful for you.